Oh, okay. And it's about five. Well, yeah. it's not quite it's enough. It's all awesome. Thank you. Uh, all right, well, I'm not at the truck. That doesn't affect me. Uh, two or three graphics that we have here on the easel, and uh, they will explain a couple of stances in the stage of uh, the corn plant development. And then we're going to talk about just exactly the uh, corn in Illinois. Gen Thank you all. Governor Thompson, Secretary Ling, Mr. Crone, and all of you ladies and gentlemen, I think I should tell you that you know the commander in chief can dictate the uniform of the day. And I see somebody didn't tell Senator Dixon about it. She got her off now. Ah. Well, you have it off. Well, then there's still a couple out there in the audience, but. Uh, if they're cold, why, I, I wouldn't want to order them to. Uh, uh. When the governor was telling you about Christmas trees, that might be an expression a little unusual for some of you. What he was talking about was a question I was just asked when we were uh, with the press down here before we came up here, and that was about right now in the Congress, uh, a number of uh, amendments are being proposed on the agricultural bill. I have to tell you that Agriculture, agriculture. Uh, I have to tell you that there is bipartisanship, as I haven't seen it too often uh, in Washington there, about this particular program. And there may be some fine amendments that belong on the bill and so forth. But also, every once in a while, it does become a Christmas tree with people trying to attach things that really have no bearing on the main purpose to a bill they know is going to pass in order to get those uh, in effect where they couldn't get them on their own. And uh, this is what we mean by a Christmas tree, and it's what I meant earlier when I responded to the press question with the idea that I hoped they wouldn't pass and I shouldn't make it that blanket because there are very possibly some worthwhile amendments. But we have more bipartisanship, as I said, than we've had in a long time there with regard to your problem. I've just inspected the corn and soybean crops of Herman Crone's farm, and before that, we came in surveying the area by helicopter. And the situation on the ground, I'm sorry to say, is as bad as I expected. Secretary Ling has been giving me regular briefings on the drought conditions in each state and the farm crisis that it's caused. But I wanted to see it for myself, and I thank all of you for showing it to me. What I saw was not a pretty sight, Stunted corn, sparse bean fields, withered plants starved for water, struggling to push their way up. Having been born and raised in this part of the country, the state of Illinois, I think if they had the Lake Michigan on there, I would know for sure. I think that my home is in the blue part, but I went to college in the orange part. 
there was a, I know how these fields would usually be at this time of year. There was a marker in the cornfield back there showing how tall the corn should be. And that was getting up around eight feet. And instead, it sort of came up to about here with the top tip of any one of the leaves on, on me. I know this farm and other areas of the country were blessed with rain this week and we're grateful for it. It was enough to wet the surface and turn the dust into mud and it may have helped buy some time, but it hasn't solved the problem. And for many farmers, time has run out. From Montana to Texas, from California to Georgia, and right here in Illinois, farmers face the worst natural disaster since the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. The heartland of America desperately needs more rain. Now, we can't make it rain, but we can help to ease the pain. And that's what the federal government will do. Currently, 1,973 counties in 38 states are eligible for federal emergency agricultural programs. And our administration is developing further measures, working with farm state governors and the Congress on a bipartisan basis. And with water levels on the Mississippi River at historic low, the Army Corps of Engineers is hard at work to keep the river open and keep the barge traffic moving. There's an old story about Mark Twain. It isn't too sensational, but since it involves a rainstorm, I thought you might like to hear it. Mark Twain was leaving church one Sunday morning with a friend, and it began to pour. And his friend asked Twain, do you think it'll stop? And Twain looked up at the sky and says, well, it always has in the past. Now, I think we can say the same thing about the drought. Will it end? It always has in the past. But the question is, when will it end and how much of the crop can be saved? Whoever talked about putting something aside for a rainy day was not a farmer or a river pilot or a grain elevator operator. We're all praying for a lot more rain and for the end of this drought. I want to let you know that we will do everything that we can. I'm calling today for Congress to act quickly on comprehensive drought relief, disaster relief for all farmers, for all crops, including appropriate forgiveness of advanced deficiency payments and relief for all non-program crops. I'm also directing Secretary Ling to lead a fact-finding team which will visit places around the country that are suffering from the drought. They'll see and hear firsthand what the drought is doing to crops and livestock and report back to me. Well, I'd like to thank the Crone family for their hospitality, and I'm very glad to have had the chance to meet with all of you. And when I return to Washington, I'll take with me what I've seen today. And I will also remember your courage, your faith, and your resolve during this difficult time. I can't close. I know it isn't proper for somebody to say, did you hear the funny thing I said? Uh, but I've been tempted beyond my strength on the basis of something here to close with. Some years ago, before I was in this job, I had been invited to address the National Farm Bureau meeting, which was being held in Las Vegas, Nevada. And on the way there to the hall where all everyone was assembled, one of those sharpers that was there for the gambling recognized me and said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm addressing the National Farm Bureau. And he said, what's a bunch of farmers doing in Las Vegas? And I couldn't help it. I said, Buster, they're in a business that makes a Las Vegas crap table look like a guaranteed annual income. <laughs> Again, thank you all, and God bless you all.
scusi scusi Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>